All right, let's get down to business. An active lifestyle can cause hemorrhoids. That sucks. Lucky for you, they're south of the border. South of the border is a holistic approach to dealing with the affected area. Go to southoftheborder.com, use code AHOLE, A-H-O-L-E, get yourself 30% off. That's pretty rad. And this is not an area of your body you wanna put bad ingredients in. Make sure you turn to south of the border. Southoftheborder.com, code AHOLE. Let me tell you a little bit about Bet Online. It remains your number one spot for NBA, MLB, MMA, boxing, it doesn't matter. Every single prop, every single play, every single point, it's all at Bet Online. When it comes to bets, when it comes to props, everything that you need is at your headquarters for sports betting. That's Bet Online. Head to the website right now, use your mobile device, sign up, get a 50, that's 50% welcome bonus. Don't forget to use the promo code B L E A V, that's believe, to get yourself a 50 percent welcome bonus come on there's no need to hesitate bet online where the game starts i hope you're ready to have your mind blown with the greatest health and fitness information on the planet <laughs> yes bitch check out my face right you know how people say, I woke up like this? I literally woke up like this in the hospital. It's a long story. No, I don't take Ambien. I don't take any, I'm, I'm in recovery. I've been sober a long time. I just think life's getting to me, bro. And uh, needless to say, I'm happy that I'm working through this. But, uh, you know, I've looked better. <laughs> Welcome to the Mikey Likes You podcast. I am Mikey who likes you, are you who is like great system. I want to talk about some stuff, basic, old school, real, important, useful training tips, okay? A lot of guests, a lot of stuff where I'm getting into the nuances of this and that. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's go back to the basics. Let's talk about good old fashioned pumping iron and how you can make it work for you, all right? Here we go. So a lot of people argue, especially now that you have the internet, you have uh, training Instagram feeds, and people are like, Mike Mincer, blah, 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 one set to failure, blah, blah, blah. Well, Arnold did 20,000 sets with 5,000 reps, and you got to get the pump. It's all about the pump. Sarcoplasmic is all that matters. Myoplasmic, blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. Here's the deal. Resistance training is effective. It's effective at gaining strength. It's effective at gaining muscular weight. Okay, there is certain ways to game the system when it comes to training schedule, when it comes to training style. But the reality is, is that human beings, much like with diet, human beings are very different. We're very unique. We're very lucky. The reason we are the king of all beasts, the reason we've lasted this long is because we're very adaptive. And people who grow up in different situations in different parts of the world have very different needs physically. Very different needs. I tell this story all the time about my friend Mike Salcedo. When I was doing my last bodybuilding show, this is early 2000s, okay? He and I are pretty similar in size and exactly the same age. But he had really big muscular legs and um, I had much wider shoulders. We were just like built a little bit differently, but we were about the same, about 180, 180, 190, 5 foot 10, okay? We both had the same guy training us for this bodybuilding show. He was eating three, 400 grams of carbs. I was eating like 80. And it's just because you try stuff and it works and it respond, your body responds differently. Um, very different lifestyles, you know, very different kind of ethnic lineage. I think that that plays a huge role. People don't like to put that into consideration. Um, there's a reason why, you know, Samoans and, and certain Islanders are just right out of the gate. They're much bigger. They're bigger people, big Jack, big, thick bones. And then there's people like my, my, my mom's side, my Mexican family, my Mexican side of the family. The, the big dude is five, three. I, I, I crushed the genetic lottery by being five foot 10. Cause they're all little guys. They're all tough as nails. 
All my all my mom's sisters, all my grandpa, my grandma, every, everyone, all their brothers and sisters, they were all five foot four, four eleven. Four, my mom's four eleven, ninety pounds, but it's just the way it goes. So there's a million factors that go into it, okay? So what I want to talk to you about right now is like optimizing your training program. You're going to have a thousand people tell you a thousand different things. I'm telling you right now, and I stand behind this. This is the best advice you're going to get. Start off this way and then game it to how it best fits you. Don't go online and look for seven different Instagram feeds about high intensity, this high volume, that the pump versus the Mike Menser, blah, blah, blah. Listen to me. Go in with this protocol. As you go on, after about two to three weeks, you can start to assess how your body responds to certain things. But the main thing I want you to take home is that this programming includes all of it. You know why Boss Rutan is considered, well, I don't know why, I don't know if he's considered. Do you know why I consider Boss Rutan one of the greatest MMA fighters to ever live? Is because he was a Dutch kickboxer and a really good one, devastating Dutch kickboxer. His striking was so clean. And his hip movement when he would oh, head kick people, it was just he was a devastating striker. But a lot of guys in that mid 90s to late 90s, early 2000s, they would be college wrestlers, they'd be Olympic wrestlers, they'd be Dutch kickboxers, they'd be, you know. Japanese kickboxers, they'd be from Thailand, whatever it may be, they had their background and then they would apply it. One of the first guys to ever really assess the fact that he could make his game more complete and that he would be better off for it was Boss Rutan. Boss Rutan's gonna leg kick you to death and Boss Rutan's gonna put you to sleep with a head kick, but Boss Rutan realized that if a guy gets him down to the ground, has any level of jujitsu, he's gonna tap him out. So Boss Rutan didn't say, oh, well, I'm just going to keep it. No, he said, what can I do? Talk to guys who are talented jujitsu artists, talented grapplers, talented wrestlers. He said, well, give me some insight. Help me out. And then, you know, later towards the end of his career, if it wasn't for his um, his injuries, like Boss Rutan's submission technique was incredibly clean. And this was a guy who grew up in the Netherlands. I mean, he was a Dutch kickboxer, like old school Dutch kickboxer. And he really developed really high quality submission techniques all from him understanding like why do i have to go one or the other and bodybuilding or physique development is very similar to mixed martial arts and that is not boxing it is not wrestling it is not muay thai but development of your body either to look better or perform better is a comprehensive one the greatest marathon runners in the world the greatest iron men they still lift weights a couple times a week is it going to be the same as Ronnie Coleman in his peak? Of course not. The greatest strength training um, artists, the greatest you know Olympic lifters, they still do some hypertrophy. Go look at any of the old school West Side Barbell, like the the top of the line power lifters. Are they doing their heavy lifts? Sure. Are they working their form? Are they working the 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 alternate lifts to the deadlift and the squat to the, make sure that their hips are strong? If, fine, yeah. But they're finishing every workout with some three sets of 15, three sets of 20 to build up hypertrophy. Because that's the way the human body works. We are not geckos and we are not gorillas. We are not, we are very, very lucky that we have this level of uh, adaptability, but also this level of really comprehensive performance. You. So what I want, that's my whole kind of reasoning behind giving you this lowdown. But I say, whether you're a beginner, whether you are a someone who has been training for years and has a shredded physique, this is how I train, okay? So this is 20 some years of heavy lifting and like real, real commitment. Push pull legs where you get to d- decide because of your lifestyle, the amount of rest days. I like to do uh, two days on, one day off. So it's push pull legs. I do chest on push day. I do chest, delts, and triceps. On pull day, I do back, all forms of back, traps, and biceps. 
And then on legs, I do legs, okay? But instead of doing three and repeat again, I do two days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. And then that way I hit everything twice in one week, but it's not necessarily day after day after day after day. It provides me enough recovery to go and then train jujitsu and then train in stand-up sports and then walk around the farm and take care of all the animals and do all those things. That's what I need. If you're just getting started, you may do push-pull legs once each, each week. That's fine. I like the idea of giving you a comprehensive setup. The push muscles, day one, would be your chest, your delts, and your triceps, pushing muscles. On day two, you would be your back, your traps, and your biceps. And then on day three, your legs, which would be your legs, okay? Now, many people will tell you, you got to do 500 sets of 20 reps and you got to get the pump and it's got to be bleeding. You got to be sore. There's plenty of people that tell you all you need is one set to failure. What I'm here to tell you why I'm saying this program works for everyone and why you should start with this program is that I want you to investigate both. My first push workout, I do hypertrophy, you know, more pump sarcoplasmic based training for my chest. And then I'll do PR work for my delts and my triceps. I switch that up at my second push work workout in the week where I'll do really heavy, just one or two sets of two exercises for my chest. And then I'll do a lot of pump work for my triceps and my, my delts. For my push workout, same thing. The first push workout I do in the week, it is all about pumping up the back, getting the lats pumped and feeling, feeling my back where I'm doing super heavy rack deads and maybe some shrugs for my, my traps. And of course, the biceps, I'll do heavy, heavy hammer curls because I'm working that, that myoplasmic really like inside the muscle cell tension and the amount that I can create improved strength within that muscle cell. Then I'll switch it up, and then the second push workout I'll do is going to be the complete opposite. I'll be doing just lots of reps, high reps, really getting a high pump in my biceps and in my traps, and then I will do one or two sets of really, really heavy rows, uh, be it dumbbell or whatnot, and then maybe some chin-ups, really heavy chin-ups, two to, th two to three sets of each with really, really pushing the PRs, heavy weights, and, and trying to maximize the amount of strength that I'm getting in my, in my back muscles, in my mid back and my, my lats, and then working the pump more in the traps and the, so it's the complete opposite. And then obviously with the legs, it's going to be pretty easy. It's a lot easier to kind of understand the difference between your leg training on the two different days. One day you would want your quads, your front of your thighs to be working real, real heavy pump. And then your calves, I do my calves and my quads for lighter weight, real heavy pump, five to six sets, a couple exercises, and just really make it so it hurts. Uh, but I'll then do some heavy straight leg deadlifts and some heavy lying leg curls and maybe some hip thrusts. One or two sets, super heavy, five to six reps. Then I switch it up on the next workout where I am doing lots of pump, getting like as much blood going into the sarcoplasmic stuff, getting as much blood volume as I can into my hamstrings and my glutes, and then finish up with my quads, uh, heavy, heavy hack squats, heavy, heavy leg, leg press, and then some super heavy seated calf, okay? So I'm really making sure that I attack every cell of my muscles, both from a high intensity and from a high volume standpoint. Now, you're going to recognize very quickly, either your lifestyle or just your body type will respond better to, to leaning more into one or the other. But you should never forego the alternative. People always ask me who, who was smarter when they're training. You know, Dorian Yates and Mike Menser or like Arnold and, and, and Ronnie, like the pump. And I go, neither. It's just human muscle is human muscle. And there's different types of human muscle cell. And each part of your body is comprised of different types of muscle. So train it all. Train it all. There's got to be some point where you're hitting every muscle cell with some level of high volume, high pump. There's got to be some level of high intensity. You have to start off 
With push-pull legs, this is a great way to just cover all bases, and then as you get smarter and start to understand your body a little bit, you will realize what you need to hedge your bets on a little bit more. I definitely am a, I'm a higher intensity guy, especially now that I'm getting older. Um, I have to switch up the exercises I choose. I can't do heavy barbell squats as much as I do like heavy hack squats, just because my I'm prone to injury a little bit more now that I'm 45 years old. Um, and you know, I don't want my back and my lungs to give out before my quads get, get the work. So I switch to hack squats instead of barbell squats, stuff like that. But, uh, there's a, there's one time a week where I I'm going heavy as heavy as I can for five to, to eight reps, uh, two sets. Then there's another time of the week where I come back and I'm doing like sissy squats with my leg extensions for 20 reps, 30 reps, really just making it miserable with that pain buildup. And I, I tend to hedge a little bit more in the higher um, intensity than I do the higher volume, but the higher volume stuff is still there. Okay. Um, Justin Harris gave me the greatest analogy. He's like, you understand, like if you were to take a slab of beef, right? Let's say 10 ounces of, of flank steak. It's 10 ounces of flank steak, right? If you cut it off the muscle of the, of the cow. If I were to make beef jerky out of it, it'd be the same amount of meat, the same amount of muscle cell, but it'd be four ounces, three ounces. Why? Because the 10 ounces was initially a lot of water, a lot of plasma, a lot of other particulates that go into that muscle cell that isn't muscle cell. So you need to be making sure that you're driving all those things into your muscle cell that aren't necessarily muscle, but also at the same time, make sure that you're trying to make those cells actually stronger, trying to develop the strength within that muscle cell, within the beef jerky, not just in to the uh, plain steak. All right. Uh, thank you to all my sponsors. They are the best. Fuck. Jack, get away. Cat, 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 cat. No, don't get in front of the camera. First attachment, love you. Speaking of Justin Harris, I love you, first attachment. I always take my field rations when I train. You should do the same. Use code Mike10. Save yourself some money. Check out my Patreon so that you can get trained by me. Thank you to Bet Online. Thank you to everyone who makes this show a reality. And most importantly, thank you to you. Thank you to you guys who support me. I appreciate it. And in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, remember, I do.